you feel bad for them, but relative work. I may have to leave okay. that in We'll be done. Uh, hopefully, we'll be done by now. Eat a bunch of cookies. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure. you have to read the rules of time, but I have to read the rules. Yep, yes, yes. No, Mark's not going to do it. No. Okay, rules of conduct for a hybrid virtual meeting. This is a web based call, so we are operating under the following procedures. The session is being both video and audio recorded. Commissioners and staff will generally remain on mute except when speaking or voting and will generally be keeping video of themselves on throughout the meeting. If a member of the public creates an audio or video disruption, they may be manually ejected from the meeting upon recommendation of staff or the chair. For public input before the meeting, please email your comments to publicinputcolumbia.org within 24 hours before the meeting. Everybody got that? Great. Call the order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Audience of citizens. Barbara Wilson. Barbara Wilson. Audience of Citizen or just joining us? I think she's just joining to she's attend. Joining us. Right, Barb? You're just attending. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Approval of the minutes, five pack rather regular minutes for September 20th, 2023. I will check the minutes as presented. Okay, wait, one second. Any, any, oh, geez. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I wouldn't have I abstain as well. All right. And abstentions and two abstentions. I'll say two. Yeah, I'll vote approved if you need it. Yeah. No, no, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Correspondence. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Anybody want to start a discussion or open anything on it? No, you uh, No, I'm not going to start, start it. All right, here, hearing uh, nothing, we'll uh, move on. 6.2, physical policy, regular meeting minutes. No, that's part of the correspondence. Okay. We'll go to the next part. All right. <laughs> Old business. <laughs> 22 23 summary. You said you wanted to get out here quick. Yes? I did. I did. <laughs> okay, All right. So, what I do is I gave you a packet of a lot of the financial statements. Um, the top page is a summary of how the town did as of June 30, 2022. I'm, um, this is all pending the final audit report. Um, so, right now, I would they, the town ended up with a surplus on the with the expenditure budget of 418,000. The Board of Ed had a surplus of 68,700. And the Board of Selectman Revenues had a surplus of 632,000. So about 1,120,000 went back into the general fund as of June 30th. So that amount again, yeah. It's right in the front here. It's on this, you have a summary. 1.11. Yep. Yeah. And then um, we did, however, take out 689000 from the general fund. So basically, the net is about a little over $400,000 that um, the town had to a, a positive for last year. Um, so basically, when you look at where it says projected fund balance as of June 30th, which is two thirds way down, it was $4.9 million. We had projected a fund balance of 4.6, so we did better than projected. 
Um, and then once you take out the encumbrances um, or add them in or as, you know, we have a $5 million overall fund balance for next year. But we do have to remember as of July 1, we took 1.3 million out. And then um, there was some things like non-spendables, which is prepaid expenses and encumbrances you have to pay for. So basically available as of June 30 is about $3.6 million, which is still pretty good. It's a little, it's a 18.65%. So we still got a pretty good fund balance going. Um, so it turned out to be a little better than anticipated at, during the budget process. So um, this packet that I gave you has details of the Board of Selectmen expenditures and encumbrances as year end, the schools, how the school ended up at the end of the year. There is a copy of the year end transfers. If you need more information on the transfers, just let me know, but it's the summary, which I believe that's what you had requested to be in the packet. Um, I did include uh, the revenues and you can also see the Board of Ed grants that came in. And there's also a spreadsheet regarding capital. And also just so you, in case you had questions about the American Relief Funds, um, as of June 30th, they still had um, a number of projects still either starting or pending, but as of June 30th, out of the available funds without making adjustments, um, there was still like 25,500 25, about that we still had to earmark for a project, which we have until the end of 2024 to purchase order. So we will be working on that sometime during the year. Once we finalize these other projects and see what's excess and needs to be paid off and finished on the other projects. As of today, some of these other, some of the projects like the fire department command vehicle has been purchased, um, the courts are complete, it completed um, and the rest are still pending, I believe so. But we'll, I'll get you updated during the year as we get through these projects so you at least know where the American Relief Funds are. Um, and then the final page on this is just showing that at the end of the year, we still had funds left over in contingency. And that's part of the surplus that went back to the general fund. So we didn't spend all the contingency last year, which is a good thing. Any questions about all this? Or like I said, you can mill it over and you can always send me questions with emails or wait for the next meeting, we can go through it further. And by that point, I'm hoping to have the audit report, so. <laughs> okay. okay. Can, you, can you walk us through how to read um, the Columbia Board of Ed fiscal 22-23 transfers? So this is the object code, which is a summary so it's broken down as the object codes. So when you look at the other report, it's all set to groupings, which are called object codes to them. So if you look at the first page, you see certified salaries. The last three digits is 111. So that coincides with the transfers, the first tra set of transfers that 163,000 was transferred to cover the um, deficit that was in the um, Board, of, Board of Ed salary lines for the certified staff. And then same thing goes for each one. Does that make sense? Okay. And so the column ending balance. That means that's what it is after. That's, that's the negative and the, the one next to it transfer amount is yep. adds up to that amount. Yes. And we don't know the to and from codes. We don't necessarily know what they well, are. Well, they're on you gotta look read down the side of right. the left side. Yep. I, well, you know, if we, we have to go back and look at the um, their actual budget. Yep, you can look at that, or it's labeled. It's also labeled on the left side of your page. If you look back and forth, you can see, like it says, uh, from one twelve, which which is actually the next category, which is not certified salaries. Um, the five sixty. If you look down, probably the next page. That's tuition. Um. Yep. So that's the uh, five sixty is some of the tuition line. Yep. Okay, that makes sense, but feel free. If you have questions, just send them to me and I'll get back to you. Okay. 
I'll take that. I was going to say that's the first thing I saw was the certified non cert. You yep. can see like the 111 and the 112. Yes. That was a good example because you could just see something out of one. Yes. And then right below it is coming in again. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of like flip flop. It's it's a fun deal to do that at the end of the year. So, um, is that because they, on the certified salaries, is that because they hired more people during the year than they had anticipated? So, there like was. So, last year, there. They had some people like either retired or resigned. And then there was replacement salary people that came in. Um, and then there was some people on leave. So there was coverage for those people. It's multiple reasons for that. Yeah. People on paid leave. So some are paid, some are unpaid. That would um, the cost. Mm -hmm. And then last year there was the transitioning to an interim superintendent and bringing in um the assistant interim well, assistant and all that so there was a variety of things salary. yep the so there was a whole variety of things that went on last year this three hundred thousand in additional costs for between salaries and health benefits so with the new with the new staffing they all took benefits and it was families which we didn't anticipate. So with the retirement of them or, you know, it weren't on taking the benefits or there was single or married plus one and the hiring was a family. So there's not much we could do about that. You can't say, well, you're only getting this because that's the thing. <laughs> you only buy the one person. Take which one in your family when being covered. Um, but yeah, so it was just multiple, multiple reasons that, that goes through all this. Okay, any other questions on that? No. Um, just to give you an update on the town audit, they are finalizing it. As far as I know, um, there have been no findings. Um, I would hope at this point they would have told me. Um, so they're finishing it up, but they we did put into an extension this year because they wanted to make sure that they completed the audit and gave me time to review it and agree with and whatever responses I have to give back because there are certain updates I have to do when the report comes. So the plan is to try to get this all filed by mid-January. So hopefully this will be in time by the next BIPAC meeting. Um, but once I get it, um, they usually send me a PDF and I can always email you copies and have the hard copies available once they come in. Um, they are working also on the, the schools, the Board of Eds, um, we call it educational financial report that I call it the monster report that has to be filed by next Friday. So they are finalizing that and getting that done as well. But that one has to has to has to the other one. This one, the, the school one can't, there's no extension. So this one, so this kind of gave a little breather just so they can finish. But as far as I know, everything went well with the audit. Um, but it's, again, as soon as I get the report, um, I'll get it sent out to everybody. Any questions? No. Okay. okay. Thank you, Beth. Uh, I have a new business. The first thing, uh, election of office. Well, before we do that, I'd like to welcome James. I'm not even going to attempt the last name. I'll, I'll get there as we move on. But uh, uh, welcome. Thank you very much. You'll find that we're a pretty agreeable group and willing to help one another. And we just kind of have a lot of fun doing it, I guess, sometimes. Other times, not so much, but, <laughs> but it all works out. Uh, <laughs> a strange idea of fun, huh? <laughs> I thought maybe you were having meetings without me. <laughs> <laughs> Is he has extensive experience on the board of ed, so he'll be able to uh, help yes, us wonderful. understand things that he's serving on the board of Fed will be a, a huge bonus, I think, for us and helping make decisions. I've said this many times in the past, and I've been on different boards and so on. And really, 
But yeah, I think in a small town, I come on here when people come and observe how we make decisions, they can't tell which party is which. I think the uh, the way we make decisions is people ask, ask a lot of questions and they make the best decision they can. Um, so it's not partisan. People don't have their own agenda. Um, they come in and just try to make good decisions. That's right. Yeah, and that's how it should be. Yep, absolutely. All right, new business, election of officers. Where do we want to go first? So probably does you want to start with, does anybody want to nominate anybody or is anybody would like to volunteer as chair or vice chair? I'll nominate Jeff Beans as chair. Second the nomination. Any discussion? Call for any other nominations. Hearing none, so we vote. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Vice, Vice, Vice Any opposed? <laughs> why, why do I want to know if anybody's opposed? It's a little late now, and everybody well, said yes. Yes. We we'll take the name. Okay. Any <laughs> opposed? I said we only have to accept the nomination, right? Yes. Okay. I did you accept it. in there somewhere. <laughs> 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 you can't get out of it now. <laughs> yep. All right. We'll move on to. How about the vice chair? That's where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Do uh, we hear a nomination for vice chair? I would like to uh, I'd like to nominate Judith Jordan for vice chair. Is it something you want to do? I cross party seven. Okay. Then we'll have a vote. All in favor? You ex I, said, I said, yes. Yes, yes. you did. <laughs> she was faster. Yeah, I know. I know. Any other nominations? I'll get this down. <laughs> Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Any absent? <laughs> Hearing none. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Congratulations to Judith. Carrie. Okay, we all have a copy of our uh, new meeting dates. So approval of the 2024 fight pack meetings and stayed on Wednesday. And you need that. That's right. Wait the um have stuff in the transcripts. So Everybody still liking Wednesdays? Yeah. 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 You don't have a choice. <laughs> they don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. James, 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 they want to know that during the, what was that, February, March, April, we, we got a lot more meetings. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's coming. Wednesdays is oh, that's coming. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That is coming. That's coming up. Yeah. Well, I didn't want him to think this was full. Cool. <laughs> oh, okay. He's on the board of Ed, he knows. <laughs> Every week, when we're in budget. Okay. Uh, then I would. Do we have to vote on it? Yes, you have motion to approve. I have to have a motion to approve. I move that we approve the meeting schedule. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There are none. Ab abstentions. I'm gonna have to write all that down. <laughs> okay, uh, meetings times passed. Uh, we didn't get to pick a location, did we? It's uh, it's on the it's on right here, but uh, here uh, in the conference uh, room. Uh, see, maybe we could have changed that. <laughs> You're gonna reopen the vote? <laughs> no. So <laughs> vote out the calendar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Really. That's yes. We're flexible. <laughs> okay. Uh, update on the Board of Ed HVAC indoor quality project. 
So just to let you know, um, we've started the application process, um, waiting for some information from the engineers. Um, the goal is try to get it done this week, but it's due on December 31st at 5 p.m. So we have at least a week to get the whole application done. There's probably, it's got a, there's gonna be a lot of uploading of documents. We've gotten letters of um, basically, we call them recommendations mm -hmm. or support um, from Tim Acker, um, Kathy Austin, Blumenthal, uh, and Courtney's office. So those will be going along with it, along with um, pulling together minutes, maintenance records, um, engineering reports and all that. So it's just pulling it all together. Um, so I do have a call tomorrow with um, Mr. Banning from Silver Petrocelli to get more information and get this all going, moving forward. Um, the we would like to try to get it done by Friday, but at least we have till next week to get it all filed. Um, just so if I back knows, um, part of the process is we have to give them a timeline. There is a deadline to get this project done. If I remember, it's end of December, 2025, if we get the grant this spring. They're looking for the spring, sometime in the spring of 2024 to notify which Board of Ed gets the funding. So it could be March, April, May. Um, we won't know, they haven't been definite yet. Again, it depends on how many applications um, and the rating systems and figuring out who's getting what and how much they're given everybody. So we're hoping we're going to get the what is it, approval for the everything we asked for. So everything we five hundred thousand dollars more in the fund. Did you hear that? Also, I I yeah. forgot this from looking at budget they're looking at. Um, most applicants didn't get funded. There were lots of problems with people's applications. Like, last year. Oh, last year. So, so we were close last year from yeah. the feedback I had gotten. There was um, just a couple of things that they didn't like. And they, you know, they didn't follow up and say, hey, what about this? And as part of it was we did not have the referendum when we should. Yeah. We are ahead of the game this time. We have all that and we have all the information about it. We have um, a better, more formal engineering cost estimate. Um, and so it's just getting that all put into the system. Um, Do you know how many people are applying? No. This year? So last year, what happened was they didn't really give to any board of ed that were in process. They gave it to the ones who have completed the process, the whole project. So they gave that a priority. So anyone who's already started and moving forward into it probably has a better chance than somebody who's probably just starting the whole process and doesn't have, um, you know, probably, probably like um, like last year we didn't have all the full estimates, engineering estimates and things like that. So, but there is possibility of another round after this year. That makes it pretty difficult for us to put in our referendums. The, the vote was contingent upon the uh, getting the. Uh, I think budget. it was advertised. It was advertised that if we don't get the grant, um, we may not move forward with it. So it'd be something we'd have to go back to the town for another referendum. So what I'm saying is the state. Yeah. If they're not approving those who aren't all already done. Yeah. It's so difficult yeah, for somebody in our in our situation yeah. where we're making that condition upon them and they're making that condition upon us. Yeah, right. It depends how you go along. Like some of the towns like Coventry, you know, they already started the bond process and all that stuff, which we've tentatively started already. So, you know, they're going to be, there's a possibility when they start looking at everything, they may come back to the town and say, hey, what's going on with this, this and this, mm -hmm. you know, but um, we filed the guidelines, we have all the motions, we have basically the basic steps that they expect to have done. We have, we'll be showing them that we have allocated some money actually to get the engineering costs paid for. That's a bonus. We have a building committee, which we didn't have last year. Um, we've had the referendum. So we have, we have a lot more positives going for us in this round. So we'll have to see, I mean, you know, and the important thing is just getting the engineering report and all that in there. So, and following on time. So they're not saying we're not gonna get it. So 
So I think they're going to try to push through what we can and see what to what they approve. But again, it's all up in the air. They might find, you know, we might have to wait for the third round, which will give us more time to keep progressing and getting things like the electrical upgrade done and all that. So, you know, but they don't give you a lot of time to get the project complete. That's that's the problem. Yeah. So we'll see, but you know, we'll once we get more information, you know, we'll certainly share share it. But um, the goal is to get it you in. Said the close last time. Do you know how close were compared to the others that got rejected, or do you? Oh no, we all, I don't have that information. They're not going to share. They don't share that kind of stuff. Does do you have the actual language of the uh, referendum vote that was passed? Yes, is it on the website too? Yep, but I can print it out for you. Because you can I don't remember it saying that it, if you didn't get the grant, it would not proceed. Did okay. it include that? Is that on the option of not proceeding? No, I believe mm -hmm. in the language. Yes. I, I, That's what we heard. I, 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 I think what, the, what we were told is not what I read in the referendum. I think it's in the explanatory text. Yeah, there's. It's kind of like, um, and no right. event shall less than forty five percent of the entire appropriations be funded. Well, that's about it. Um, but but the explanatory text isn't law. No. The words of the referendum are law. Yeah. Well, and I know we had. I know we had um, the bond council look at it. Um, and a few other people look at it and what was said was supposed to be appropriate. So, but the but, full but, but I guess it's not clear to me if we don't get the grant, or is it is it dead? I don't. Or think, is it we can still go forward? We could still go forward, but we'd have to go back to the town for another referendum because we the referendum vote was based on us receiving at least forty five percent reimbursement from the state. So if we don't. Not getting it, spend 100%. Yes, if we don't, yes, so it's yeah, then we go back and say, but what it doesn't say we need to go back again. Is this the question right here that's in quotes? Which is what I, I thought it was. It I just said, Shall the town appropriate six million dollars for HVAC system and indoor air quality improvements at the Horth W. Porter School and authorize the issuance of a general obligation bonds and notes of up to 3.396 to finance said appropriations? Yes, no. I think There's zero in there about if we don't get the grant. I think it was said. It. I think it was said at the town meeting or something. I think no. What she she said is that with yeah. the, the the it doesn't explicitly say on the referendum. Yeah. No, this that, is, because it's a yes no shall the town, If if the vote was yes, the town shall do it. That is the law. We're now obligated to do it. We don't get to say no. We're not. We can't. Do it. You, you. But the problem is that the the referendum also. Is, Explicitly states that we've given a certain no, it doesn't. Bond. No, it just said we're going to allocate 3.6. Yeah, yeah it's 3.6. So if there's a shortage in calculation, I think we'd have to let that be done. Now you have to infer what it is. And what you're saying is it's not lost. All you have to do is go back to the plan. What was different? You get it. You're going into that. No, you have to. It says we shall appropriate $6 million. I think we have to look at the resolution that was approved. Which means we've got to come up with the other three if we don't get this grant. As I read this, but I believe the discussion that came out of one of the meetings was I think if we don't get the grant, there will probably be another town meeting and possibly a vote. What I'm possibly. telling you is that, that that what what people said in the meeting, what people think is not what was voted on. The town voted that we're going to have to spend six million dollars, yes. regardless of whether we get a grant. Yes. So if we if we if somebody says, oh, we're not going to spend it because we didn't get the grant. We can be forced to do it. Yeah, but I'm not sure if the resolution said anything about it. I don't remember. I don't understand why it wasn't put into the referendum that we could that we, it was contingent on getting the grant. We were told at every meeting that we attended mm -hmm. that it would be contingent on the grant, and there's nothing in here about that. Uh, that I can't answer for you. That would be the point of slot. It would or, be the state <laughs> To put that together. When the Board of Education sues us to enforce that, we will be sorry that we didn't get that money. I don't before. think they're going to sue, so. <laughs>
Anyway, I guess we'll cross that line once we get to that point. So. Well, you don't, you don't get off to a easy here because you're going to move on to the next, the 23-24 budget. Yeah, so 23, I just wanted to give you a little update. I didn't have reports because things are still, um, but overall, I think the budgets are in line so far. There isn't anything too big surprises. Um, I know that um, the board segment, everything seems to be fine. You know, I put a, bit, a couple of transfers. Um, the revenue coming in, there was, I think, a um, municipal revenue share. Again, we didn't anticipate. So the town got another 100000 that we did not anticipate from the state. Um, all the other grants are coming in pretty much within budget. The Board of Ed, we're, we're cautiously watching it. Um, with the new state law, um, and Barb can certainly chime in with that when we get to that point. Um, we've had some new students come in. Some of it has to do with a change in legislation where the age limit has changed and gone up. So some of the students that aged out last year are allowed to come back into district. So that is possibly about $100,000 and there's potential other students coming into the district. So there is going to be a review of the budget to see where we're at. They're carefully monitoring all expenditures. Um, and um, and is it okay if Barb says something, Jeff? Oh, absolutely. And Barb, would you like to add? And so, yes. Yeah, so we were informed on July 15th that effective July 1st, the state law had changed regarding the cutoff for special education for students in the past. Prior to a year or two ago, students uh, were cut off at the age of 21. Um, up until this year, they were cut off the the age the year in which they turned 21, but they were allowed to finish out the year. And on July 15th of 2023, we were informed that students were allowed to um, receive services through the school year in which they turned 22. A school year begins July 1st. So if we had students who were turning 22 on July 1st, July 2nd, um, we did not budget for those students because the law was such that they were done. Again, on July 15th, we were informed that effective two weeks prior, July 1st, those students need to be recontacted and allowed to attend uh, public education at town expense for another year. So we did have some students that fell into that category. Um, in addition, we have had um, a number of move-ins of services that were not budgeted for. So we are we are watching that uh, very closely. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Any questions on that? Hearing no. none, I think we'll move on. Okay. Tri board meeting for the 24 25 budget process. Yeah, so you should all have gotten a copy of the budget schedule that's coming up. This will show Jim all the meetings he's going to get. <laughs> um, so, with the HVAC and having a tri board meeting, it was decided that we're going to try January for a tri board meeting to start off the budget process. So, it has been scheduled for the January. The same night as the January five pack meeting on January seventeenth. So, um, we'll do like the budget meeting, maybe a summary of the budgets, and see if there's anything that comes up that we know of um, between the boards that might want to be brought to the attention between the three boards. You know, like we usually do between the capital operating, anything changed. So, um, and then that'll just kick off the whole budget process, so everybody can just start getting ready for everything. So. This is just an FYI for you. Um, I know both sides have started the budget process. Information has been sent out to all departments to start. Um, I think Barb and Mark will agree. We haven't heard anything that's totally any big surprises yet. It's still too early, but by the January meeting, we we'll probably have a better heads up than having a December meeting um, to inform anybody if there's going to be some major changes in the budget, or at least an initial projection. So. Um, any questions on that? Nope. nope. Hearing none, I think we'll move on to the Board of Ed Administrative and Certified Staff Union yep. Negotiations. So both those um, union negotiations have been completed. Um, the 
No, no, no. I can say some certain things. So the contracts are now, I think, um, have been filed with the town clerk for viewing. I think we're halfway through the 30 days. Um, so if people want to look at the contracts, they have questions, but I believe they've both been ratified. Um, and then uh, I'll add the, go to the next one about the non-certified units. They are starting to come up and correct me if I'm wrong, Barb, if somebody from FIPAC would like to attend um, uh, those meetings, um, they're welcome to. They just need to let Barb know. What date? So we don't have dates yet. The uh, Their union folks have not reached out to us, but I anticipate they will be um, in mid-January. Uh, just send me over the dates. Will um, do. Are these public meetings? Uh, Barb, can anybody attend the e negotiations or you just need one representative? We have one representative that is invited from FIPAC. Would you like to go? No, I don't want to go. But <laughs> what is the purpose of having a representative if they can't speak about it? Sorry. I mean, I, I remember meeting you the first time you came observed was Chris Lent and Lynette and I were uh, yeah. on the committee and you yeah. came observed and you after they left, you were able to converse with us right. like informally, but uh, to get an idea of the process. I don't know if you felt know. Well, I probably said something no. anyway, regardless. It's, it's a negotiation. Don't say anything. Negotiation, you can't be public about it because it could skew what's going on in the negotiations. It's like a contract negotiation, you can't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's some rule, but you know. It's just a rule of the negotiations. Yeah. I, I would assume that for you would require them to be public, but. Well, it's something we can, it's something we can look into. I hope you want to do that. I can get some clarification from the board attorney if you would like, but we were, I was told by her that um, FIPAC is invited in a member of FIPAC to view the negotiations, but not be a part of it, but able to view all negotiations. Yeah, I, I did it one year. What I think, I think what Kelly Farney was suggesting is that because it's a public employee union that technically in theory, the, the negotiation should be public. Um, right. And if FIPAC has a representative there, FIPAC should be able to hear what the representative learned from. What, what good is us having a representative there if the representative can't then fill us in on what's happening? So I accept that you can for now, but it doesn't make any sense to me why we would have someone who can observe if they're not allowed to do anything with what they've observed. But we can have a closed session where it's just by getting an update from who else oh, is okay. saying. Yeah. I don't know. No, well, is, is uh, that uh, no, we don't know. But I don't do think now, so. But. I've been told that the observer cannot discuss with anyone what's going on in there because there's sensitive information that gets discussed. And if it's not, if it's not finalized and it gets out, it could cause a problem in negotiations because other things could just disrupt the negotiations. Now, all the union negotiations at the state level are oh, the same. Like, you know, there's no outside yeah. sharing. Makes sense. Yeah. I'll get clarification for all of you. I'll try to get it for you to, for tomorrow. Thanks, Barb. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, Arthur, are you going to attend yes. uh, both of them? Yeah. Not, not so bad. Very good. Uh, transfers next. Okay, we have two transfers. Um, one is $1,683 to cover new furniture in the tax collector's office. Um, in one of the heavy, heavy rains, um, there was some damage in our office and it was decided to revamp the whole office and we bought our new furniture, which was not part of the budget. And the other one is $4,657. It was not budgeted. Um, we needed to replace some firewalls for the town hall. And um, it was, again, it was not a budgeted item and it's part of the IT and just trying to put some funds back into that line um, because of, we're finding out more and more we need to do some equipment replacement. So 
we were using contingency into both just to cover those costs. Yeah, that is it. Actual transfer form says four three five seven and four six five seven. Oh, it's probably the four three five seven. So it is probably a typo. Okay. Sorry about that. Not the minutes. Any discussion? On anything else? Move to approve the uh, transfers as presented. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Any opposed? Very well. Good time. Yeah. Let it back. All right. Next meeting is going to be Wednesday, January 17th. After the tribe board meeting. After the tribe board. Yep. Tribe board meeting. After the tribe board meeting. I think that was at seven, right? Yes. Yeah. Need to kick off of the uh, season. Well, it's when we'll get informed about what everybody's looking to do. And then the budgets have to come to us by uh, uh, 315. March 15th. As uh, per char charter, we should be presented with the budgets. So we'll have to get <laughs> Yes. Well, in March. Okay. Yep. Need one more. I move to be adjourned. Hey, Jeff, can I add something quick? Sure. Um, all the board members should have received an invitation. If not, we'll send it out again. But uh, CCM every year has a uh, training session for new members of boards of commissions or members that are now chairmen or vice chairmen. And We'll get the time and the place to you. It's probably at one of the uh, major hotels, probably in Rocky Hill. But they're really good, and especially if you're on FIPAC. They focus on best practices for a FIPAC board, and um, they have a lot of speakers, uh, finance directors, and um, people who have been doing this for a long time who will put together a summary for you to consider. So uh, Jen will send it out again, but it's, uh, it's, it's really, really well done. I've gone to about three of them. Oh, there's multiple days? It's one day, one morning, I think. Yeah, is that known? Is it in person? Or... It, I believe it's in person. January 6th, in person. I don't know if they have a Zoom option. <laughs> I can't stop coughing. I haven't seen it come through here. So it's on a Saturday. It's on Saturday. Yeah. Well, you get weekend pay to uh, attend that. Attend that. that time and a half? I'm, I'm sure coffee and pastries are complimentary. get to vote to adjourn it. You already did. No. Motion to vote. <laughs> oh, okay. We have to vote to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ernie never happy, happy holidays. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. We never all went before. Uh, Good night, all. Good night. 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 Good night.